What's up, buddy? My name is Chris, and today I want to test and show you the DDW Lav Pro and Micro. Two Lavier microphones which have certain features and differences. And of course, I want to put them up against the other Laviers which I have accessible to me the Smart Lav Plus by Rode and the microphone that came with the Track E audio recorder made by Tentacle Sync. Now, laviers are a really good way to be able to get a microphone up close onto a person or somewhere near a person when you don't have availability for any other options like overhead microphones or you don't want to have a big microphone in a shot, for example, a podcasting microphone. Laviers can also be used in conjunction with all kinds of different audio recorders. This here is not an audio recorder, but it's an adapter, so you can use it with whatever XLR devices that you have, which provide phantom power. Then the Rode VXLR Pro converts that to a plug-in power. And on the other side, we have a threaded adapter to a 3.5 millimeter jack. So we can use this if we want to use any of these laviers in conjunction with, for example, something like the Zoom F6. Then, of course, you can also use something like the Track E audio recorder. This is by Tentacle Sync. It's a 32 bit float audio recorder, which has a 3.5 millimeter jack, again, a threaded one, so that you don't have to worry about the microphone ever unplugging from this device. And lastly, I also wanted to show wireless units. And in this case, I have the Rode Wireless Go 2 here on the table. And this, of course, has a non threading adapter. So you might have to be a little bit more careful in terms of looking after not having this yanked out or something similar. But using a lavier in conjunction with the Rode Wireless Go is a upgrade in terms of the sound quality and also in terms of the ability to be able to hide the microphone unit. Because of course, if you want to use the built in microphone right here, then you would have the whole unit visible somewhere on the collar of someone that is speaking into it. Now, before we jump into the tech specs and the sound samples and a bit of a test, for transparency, these microphones have been sent to me by DED free of charge and I get to keep them after making these tests. This video, however, is not going to be sent to them before and the opinion depicted is just my own. Now, one might wonder why I actually make two microphones because based on the technical specifications, they are actually quite similar. Now, let's take a look into the Pro. This is the WLAV Pro and the box is nothing special, but inside you actually get a bit of a package which you can use to transport this microphone. Now, personally, I never really use these much because I like my stuff even smaller packaged than this, but it is really nice that they include this in the package. Now, as you can see inside, you get two little windscreens. There's some tape up here and then also some wind muffs and sticky tapes again from Rycut. And then we have the microphone itself, which is right here and the holder so you can clip it to something. And last but not least, of course, a bunch of cable so that you can actually hide this pretty well and put this somewhere where you want it to be. And at the bottom, you can see we have the micro dot connector so that you can actually connect this to all kinds of different adapters which you can buy from DAD as well. And the one that I have right here is called the DA35. This is the locking 3.5 millimeter jack. And apparently that's the one which is basically compatible with the types of, for example, the locking mechanism of the track E right here. Now that's everything that you get in the box for the Pro. And when we take a look at the Micro, that pretty much looks exactly the same. We just add a box and then we have this little package right here, opening that up again, tape, stickies and fluff. Then we have two wind filters. We have the holder, which you can use to basically put this on a collar. And then we have the microphone and again, a micro dot adapter. Now, the whole topic of micro dot adapters was actually pretty new to me. And I usually just use XLR or 3.5 millimeter jacks. However, what I do absolutely appreciate is that they are using the locking mechanism there so that you don't actually have to worry about yanking it out when you have a compatible device that also has the locking mechanism on the female part of the connector. But I do think that it's super handy and great that they made this available in this price point, which seems to be a market that is not necessarily all too filled up at this point. We have microphones and laviers, which have just a 3.5 millimeter jack, and we have laviers which are under $100 but nothing really in that $100 to $200 range, which was kind of unclaimed. And so this here brings a new set to that place in the market. 
Now, in terms of technical specifications, both of these microphones are actually a omnidirectional capsule, so you can pretty much speak into them from whatever direction you want to. They have a response from 20 Hz all the way to 20 kHz, which is just about the whole range that you need for any type of production. You have a cable length of 1.8 meters, which actually is quite impressive and sometimes even weird to hide. However, that can actually be really useful when you want to mount the microphone, for example, in the hair, and you want to still go all the way down to the waist or even to the ankle, depending on where you want to mount this. And with that, we have the similarities covered. And in terms of differences, there are a couple of things that need to be pointed out. Now, of course, there's something to be said about the size of these microphones, but I want to first cover two other differences, which is the sound pressure or the maximum sound pressure and the dynamic range. The Pro here on this side has a maximum sound pressure of 130 decibels and a dynamic range of 110 decibels because it can reach all that high to 130 decibels. Now, with the Micro, on the other hand, we have a maximum sound pressure of 110 decibels, and then we have a dynamic range of 83 decibels. This difference basically means if you have a lot of screaming going and very loud noises, or you want to mic something that is really loud, or you're in an extremely loud environment, then you would want to go with the Pro for that use case. The Micro, on the other hand, has a other benefit, and that, of course, is the sheer size. You can see a strong difference in the size of the microphone capsule right there, with the Pro one being on the right-hand side. The Pro has a size of 4 millimeters in diameter, so when we look at it from the top right there, there are 4 millimeters right there, and the Micro has 3 millimeters in diameter. And in terms of length, in terms of the capsule, we have 17 millimeters right here with the Pro, and then about 10 millimeters with the Micro. Now, of course, that makes the Micro much easier to hide inside of clothing or any way you want to make it invisible, and the Pro not as easy, but on the other hand, it has the dynamic range benefit and a waterproof and dust-resistant rating of IP57, which basically means, specifically for the water, you can submerge it in up to one meter of water for 30 minutes. In terms of price, at the time of making this video, they are also slightly different. With the DA35 microdot adapter, the Pro costs about 150 US dollars and the Micro 210. Now, with those details covered, now it is time for the comparison of the sound of the DADW Lav Pro, the Micro, the Smart Lav Plus from Rode with the adapter to TRS, and then, of course, also the Tentacle Sync Track E microphone which comes with that package. I have some samples with the Track E as the audio recorder and the microphone clipped to my collar. And then I also have a couple of recordings with the help of the Rode VXLR Pro going into the Zoom F6 and a bit of a distance test, how that sounds there, and also including a test of how it sounds when you speak from the side or directly in the front of the microphone. Dig deep within yourself, for there's a fountain of goodness ever as you flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there's a fountain of goodness ever as you flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there's a fountain of goodness ever as you flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there's a fountain of goodness ever as you flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there's a fountain of goodness ever as you flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Dig deep within yourself, for there is a fountain of goodness ever ready to flow, if you will keep digging. Now, when I was listening back to these samples, I was actually pretty surprised how similar the Pro and the Micro sound, given the size difference of these two. But maybe that's also part of the engineering that went into the Micro that makes it a little bit more expensive than the Pro. 
The other two, the Rode SmartLav Plus and then the Track E microphone, were not as good sounding and just not as nice in my opinion. And you can of course make your own mind up about that. To me, the Rode SmartLav Plus was a bit closer to the two Deity microphones, but the Track E microphone definitely was lacking a little bit. Now, granted, the Track E is a microphone that you get included in the package of the Track E set. So maybe that's something to take into consideration here that it's practically included in the whole package of the Track E audio recorder. Now, all of these microphones here are dedicated microphones that you purchase to upgrade your audio quality. So in that sense, it is kind of to be expected that you are also getting a upgraded audio experience, at least from how I was listening to these. Overall, I was quite happy about the sound and the experience that these two microphone sets provide, giving you a chance of using something like this to be really, really small and giving you the ability to, for example, hide something like this inside of a button. And now, of course, the cable is going to be visible, but if I now close this button up right there, you can barely make it out right there. And of course, there's a black version of this microphone as well, so that you can also make use of that. Now, in my case, when I'm, for example, wearing a black shirt. Now, let's do this out again and go over the other benefit, which the Pro actually has. Now, the Pro has a bit of a different feature, which is that it is also water resistant. Now, I have seen tests do this and I just wanted to do the same test myself. Now, this is the Track E Auto Recorder and I'm gonna just start a recording right there. This, of course, is currently time code synchronized to the whole set that I am using here. And with that, I am going to include the audio from this microphone right now. So as I'm speaking, you are now hearing the WLAV Pro from Deity. And I have a glass of water right here. And maybe I have to top this off a little bit. So let's see, give it a little bit more. And now let's just put this microphone into this glass of water and see what happens. And there we go. Now we have this underwater and yep. let's drink a sip. Ah, yep, still water. And here we have the microphone now coming out of the water. And there are small droplets of water here on the microphone. Let's try to get those off. Now, the interesting thing is how does it sound after being in the water? Now, I don't expect this to sound stellar because it's not supposed to be a microphone that sounds perfect after coming out of the water. It's not a underwater microphone by any means either, but it's made to withstand a stress like this. Now, if I try to get the water out of this microphone, now I slightly dried it up and tried to shake it out a little bit so that the water gets out of the capsule and maybe I still have to dry this off, but the main point here being is that you can or could submerge this in water. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really do anything to the microphone. It will survive that. And I can see this being useful, for example, if you have a athlete that is doing water sports, or maybe you want to have this mounted to someone who is at risk at getting water uh, somewhere near. And of course you can also use this in the rain or something similar. Again, it's obviously not perfect and you want to still keep this dry, but it's an option that you have or a security of sorts. Now, who should buy these microphones and which one should you choose? And there, obviously, it depends on your personal use case. I think if you're, for example, unhappy with the microphone that came with your wireless unit, then you could definitely check these out. Also, if you want to have the versatility of having a black microphone and a beige microphone, then this can also be a really cool alternative because it gives you the option to either purchase one or the other. Then, of course, you also have the topic of the micro dot connector, which can be interesting if you have a wireless kit that needs that, but you don't want to spend the extra money on, for example, going all the way to microphones that cost upwards of 500 US dollars. These here are one very tiny with the micro, and then of course you also have the great sound with the pro, and especially the waterproofness there, so both of these aspects can be deciding factors. Now, personally, I think the micro is really interesting because you can super hide it easily in, for example, someone's hair, in the clothing, and it's super invisible when you have a right place for it. 
With the Pro, on the other hand, you have a microphone that is slightly less expensive than the Micro, and you also have a wider dynamic range. So in a sense, the Pro is a all-purpose microphone, not as easy to hide, but still tiny compared to some other microphones on the market, and especially in the cheaper realm of Lavier microphones of like under $50 or something, there you usually have really big capsules. Now here you have standardized tiny capsules, which are easy to hide, and you have all that for a price of around 150 US dollars for the Pro, including the adapter. The one thing that I think is a bit of a con and I did not expect, but maybe this is a thing about more professional type microphones, is actually the holder that comes in the box. And this right here is the holder that you get when you purchase one of these DoD microphones. It's basically the same for both of them, but essentially you just push the cable into the holder like so. And you really have to pull it in there. And now you have it mounted like so. Now you can of course use this method, for example, to put this microphone onto someone's shirt collar like so. However, there's actually one thing that I really liked about the SmartLav Plus by Rode and the holder that they have there. Now with the Micro, you just have this little piece where you push in the cable and that of course kind of makes sense because you don't really have much room to put any holder on the capsule itself. And this also makes it so that the capsule essentially is a little bit shock mounted because of the cable that is just simply holding the microphone. Now on the other hand, if you have something like the SmartLav Plus, it's a bit of a different story. You have the microphone or the clip itself, then you have the metal, which is then holding the microphone capsule, and the cable actually goes through, so you have it back here, and then it goes into the inside and you have it mounted or clipped right there inside of this little holder. Now what this means with this specific microphone is that I can funnel this through my clothing put it up into my collar right there and the cable actually comes into the inside and is held there without me needing to somehow put it into the clamp or something like that. So that is something that I actually really appreciate about this holder made by Rode and I haven't seen this done anywhere else, sadly actually, because I absolutely prefer this way to be able to have this second thread right there where the cable can be mounted easily so that it is not in the way and especially it kind of loops inside of the clothing and that way it's really easy to hide the cable at least, not so much with the microphone because that of course will be on the outside. Now I get that these microphones from DED, they are made to be hidden away, they're not made to be mounted to the collar and that's pretty much the last resort that you should use if you have any other way of mounting these microphones, that would be preferred. And in that sense, it makes sense that you also don't have a very sophisticated clamp right there. Just something that I thought I wanna mention here because I so much appreciate how Rode developed that other clip and how they're using that so that you can actually funnel the cable back and don't have to do something like this where it's just not going to stay there because it's not actually in place anywhere. It's not holding in place anywhere. Now with that and in conclusion, I would absolutely recommend you check out these microphones if you're looking to upgrade your Lavier game. If you have any questions, you can leave those in the comment section down below. And with that said, I hope you have an amazing day, make it your life, record better audio with Lavier's, hide them, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.